Hey guys, it's Kay Jones here, and this video is going to be on some important tips for you beginner Ironmen to know about. Alright, the first tip is quest. And I know you don't like quest. I don't like questing. Most people don't like questing, but the truth is you unlock so much helpful content from quest. And most of that content is needed. Like it's not an option. You have to do quest to get this content on your Iron Man. And I'm going to tell you some in very important quests that I highly recommend that y'all do. And that it's going to give you great rewards and benefits on your Iron Man. Here are a few of the important quests that I recommend. One of the first quests that I recommend you to complete on your Iron Man or woman is Rune Mysteries. It unlocks the essence mining skill and essentially the rune crafting skill. So it is an essential quest to get done on the beginning part of your Iron Man. I say this is one of the first quests you should complete and it's free to play. The next quest I recommend for Iron Man is a beginner quest is Hand in the Sand. 100 buckets of sand daily if you talk to Bert and Yanel. It's great for crafting and is passive over time. So if you stop by Nightmare Zone, you just do a little quick mini game teleport and you pick up your 100 buckets of sand a day, that saves you a bunch of time instead of hopping each world at charters which is really boring and monotonous and later on down the line when your iron man's pro and you complete the elite r join diary bert will deliver these hundred buckets of sand to your bank without you having to talk to him it's great so do this quest guys it takes like five minutes to do now this quest, Bone Voyage, is extremely important, but it has some higher requirements, but they're not that bad, guys. You need to have at least sailed to Zaya once, 100 kudos, which isn't that bad to get, then the completion of Dig Site and Druidic Ritual. It's 110% worth getting done because it unlocks seaweed farming, birdhouse runs, and herbivore. Seaweed farming is going to save you a ton of time on crafting because one giant seaweed is equivalent to six normal seaweed and you get like 50 a patch and there's two patches and they're done every 30 minutes. They're great. Birdhouse runs are so essential for brews, guys. Whenever you get to a higher level Ironman, brews are so much needed and crushed nests are the component for that. And of course, Herbivore is pretty awesome because you get some great hunting XP and you get some herbs for Herbler. So it's awesome. I highly recommend y'all complete Bone Voyage because it is so important. Also, if you're wanting guides on seaweed, uh, birdhouse runs, or Herbivore, I will link my guides in the description to these topics. This next quest, Throne of Miscellanea and Royal Trouble, yeah, it's two quests that are so important, unlocks the kingdom, which unlocks valuable resources that you get passively over time. You get tons of herbs from this, coal, and even teaks and mahoganies from this for construction. Guys, you gotta do this. Make sure you have these quests probably done around 60 combat on your iron. It helps so much. All right, the next quest is Tears of Guthix. Now, as an Iron Man, you need to make a bullseye lantern, which is like 45-something crafting. I'm not too sure. You'll have to look up the requirements on that. But once you get that crafting level, this is such an essential quest because it allows you to get XP in your lowest skill once a week. This is how I got 70 rune crafting passively over time, guys. I literally just did Tears of Guthix once a week, and I got 70 rune crafting from it within like 8 months. Just once a week, guys, that's it. 70 rune crafting just for playing an Iron Man for 8 months is incredible. So make sure you do this quest as soon as you can. It's super quick and totally worth it. 
Next quest I highly recommend is song, Swan Song. It has a ton of requirements and is probably on the upper division for Iron Man. Probably 70 combat is a good time to attempt this quest, but it unlocks Monkfish Fishing, and Monkfish Fishing is right next to a bank. Dank food for combat and Slayer, guys. Get this quest done. The last quest that I'm going to be putting on this guide for y'all to do that I highly recommend is Lunar Diplomacy. It's a long quest, but honestly, it's my favorite quest in RuneScape. It unlocks Super Glass Make, which is on the Lunar spell book, which will help you tremendously with crafting. You no longer have to use that stupid furnace to make molten glass. And I recommend that you complete Dream Mentor for the full Lunar spell book. Alright guys, don't worry, we're done with talking about all the quests that I recommended. And I didn't even get to recommend all of them. I mean, there's so many quests that are so important. If you guys can think of any quests that you think that are essential, and I didn't really mention it in this guide, put it down below in the comments to help people out. And y'all can scroll through there to see the other important ones that I missed. Alright guys, so the next tip that I got for you is to use and abuse home and mini game teleports so let's talk about the mini game teleports we're gonna go up in here on our quest list and hit this little red star check this out these are mini game teleports and you can use one of these every 30 minutes a lot of these teleports are so crucial in the beginning for iron man for example nightmare zone will take you near yanel and arduin so let's go ahead and click that and we're gonna hit teleport you gotta use and abuse these guys so you end up don't walking across the entire runescape to get to a location. Just use the mini game teleport. Super easy, super chill, and it comes in handy a lot for clues and just quests and just everything in the game. Check it out, we're in Yanel. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's take a look at this on the map, guys. Look, Yanel. Awesome. In Port Kazard, and we're near like castle wars and everything that's needed easy peasy i think you only need to visit with these locations once before you're able to use them the next one is house teleports so make yourself a house guys and get yourself level 50 something construction because then you can start making portals as you can see i've got a carol teleport varrock teleport arduin teleport and when you go upstairs i even have more teleports and that's not the only teleports I have. I have teleports on the other side of my house. This goes to um, Ape Atoll with the monkey place. This goes to Camelot and this goes to Corin. And I've got more teleports. Waterbirth and then Lunar and Yano. I mean, I've got teleports everywhere in my house. Preferably near the entrance because it's easy to get to. But if you run all the way on the other side of the world in my house, I've got more teleports to Falador, uh, the dig site, and Troll Stronghold. So guys, I highly recommend that you make these teleports in your house. That way you don't constantly have to get out ruins. It makes everything so convenient. Get that 50 construction, get your mage levels up, and it'll be easy to get all around the game. Alright guys, my last tip for you new Iron Man out there. <sighs> be patient with RNG. You will win some and you will lose some. And I say that with a serious heart here. You know, playing the Iron Man two years. I got super lucky on Bandos and Sarah. Super lucky. Armadil, I've gotten 400 kills and I've only got a darn helmet for a piece. And two hilts, which I'll never use on an Iron Man, unless I decide to go PKing, but you can't get loot from people. So I kind of am here to show you that you will go super dry on some of the items that you go for on a high level Iron Man, even a low level Iron Man. You may not get your rune scimitar until 2,000 fire giants later, or you may get it on the first kill. You've got to be super patient, guys. You'll get super lucky in some areas, and you'll get very unlucky in others. Just pray to RN Jesus. Just kidding, that's not real. But seriously, you're going to have to be very patient on an Iron Man. There are people who are known to go 20,000 kills dry on a Dragon Warhammer, which is a 1 in 5k drop. So be patient, enjoy the game, enjoy the grind, 
and thanks for watching guys. You can follow me on Twitch because I stream every once in a while and you can also follow me on Twitter for IRL and in-game updates and I just think I hit the mic but that's okay. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Feel free to give this a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Bye!